life of little Harmony Montgomery is almost too tragic to talk about. Her death was so violent and so utterly reprehensible that it's almost too disturbing to mention. But tonight, we will talk about both because Harmony deserves to be remembered and this little angel deserves justice. Harmony was born to Crystal Sori and Adam Montgomery, but unfortunately for Harmony, both her parents suffered from addiction problems. These issues were addressed by a judge in family court in Massachusetts in a questionable hearing where Adam, a career criminal, was granted sole custody of Harmony in New Hampshire. Harmony then lived with her father and stepmother, Kayla. The couple was evicted from their home and began living in a car. That's where prosecutors say Adam murdered his daughter in 2019. For two years, no one reported her missing until Crystal started making some noise and alerted authorities who began searching for Harmony. Harmony has never been found. But now Adam has been charged with her murder and Kayla, his estranged wife, will be the prosecution's most important witness at trial. Tonight, we go in depth into the life of this beautiful little girl and try to answer the question, what happened to Harmony? I'm Vinnie Politan, thank you for joining us tonight. How could this happen? How could this happen? When you think about the life of Harmony Montgomery and, and, and you look, you look at her face and you look at that little smile and you think to yourself, how could anything terrible happen to this little girl on purpose? How could grown people allow anything terrible to happen to this little girl? It did, it did. And tonight we're gonna try to figure out how this could happen. She was missing for two years, from 2019 to 2021, before she was reported missing. Let's go back to the first question, how could that happen? How could it happen that a little girl like that could just vanish for two years and no one notices? No one says anything? Nobody wonders, where, where's Harmony? Where's that little girl? There's no relative, no family friend? There's no one wondering where she was for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, for Easter? Why she's not in school? No one is asking any questions? No one from family services? Like, no one? Like, like a little girl just vanishes and no one says anything or does anything or notices anything for two years? How could this happen? Custody in this case was granted to a career criminal. Her father, a career criminal, who's now in prison because... He's a career criminal who possessed a weapon. If he just possessed a weapon, maybe you do some time, maybe you don't. But if you're a career criminal who possesses a weapon, you go to prison forever. But somehow, if you're a career criminal, you get sole custody of a child? How could this happen? How could this happen? What world was Harmony living in? Where the best choice, the best place for her to be, and the, the legal standard that our courts use is best interests of the child. Someone explain to me how on earth the best interest of the child is to be in the sole care, control, and custody by a career criminal. How could that happen? Then she was beaten and murdered. 
beaten by an adult. Like an adult is going to beat her to the point of death. This little girl. How can this happen? How, how can this happen? And we cover murder cases all the time, and we're always like, well, what was the motive? Was it money? Was it someone's cheating, et cetera? Like, you know, bad business deal, bad drug deal, whatever, breaking an entry. Like, how could this happen? Someone's going to beat to death this little girl? So many questions that come back to the same question. How could this happen? For those of you not familiar with the story of Harmony Montgomery, Ted Rollins has more for us tonight. And I want you to know that I never stopped looking for you and I won't stop fighting until I find you. Harmony Montgomery disappeared in 2019. For two years, nobody reported her missing until November of 2021 when her mother, who had lost custody of Harmony while dealing with substance abuse, called police. I've been begging for any type of answer since 2019. Harmony's father, Adam Montgomery, and his wife, Kayla, had custody of Harmony. They told investigators that they left Harmony with her mother after they were evicted from their home. Eventually, in January of 2022, police had enough evidence of physical abuse against Adam Montgomery. He was arrested for assault of his daughter. He pled not guilty. Adam's wife, Kayla, was arrested as well for perjury. Both said they had no idea where Harmony was. Well, there's some discrepancies between what you're telling us and what other people are telling us. Like, this isn't going to stop. So, no, no, it's not. So... So Either get on the bus now or get run over. Yeah, I got nothing else to say. Investigators also uncovered evidence that Adam Montgomery had stolen guns. He was slapped with multiple charges, including theft and being an armed career criminal. Then in October of 2022, he was charged with Harmony's murder. Five-year-old Harmony was murdered in Manchester in early December of 2019. Mr. Montgomery has been charged with the following second degree murder for recklessly causing the death of Harmony Montgomery by repeatedly striking Harmony in the head with a closed fist. According to the probable cause statement, Kayla Montgomery, Adam's wife, told investigators they had been evicted and were living in their car when, quote, Adam was extremely upset that Harmony was not saying when she needed to go to the bathroom and was having accidents in the car. While Adam was driving, he turned his body and delivered sets of three to four blows to Harmony's face and head on three separate occasions over a course of a few minutes. After the final blow, Adam said, I think I really hurt her this time. Kayla said they eventually discovered Harmony was no longer breathing and Adam stuffed her body in a duffel bag. Despite numerous searches, Harmony's body has never been found. Adam Montgomery, her father, denies that he killed her. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. In June of 2023, a jury found Montgomery guilty of the weapons charges, and at his sentencing, he spoke to the judge asking that she not let the pending murder charges impact her decision. The only consideration that I ask of you this morning is for you not to consider anything as it relates to the case regarding my daughter Harmony. I did not kill my daughter Harmony, and I look forward to my upcoming trial to refute those offensive claims. Adam Montgomery was sentenced to at least 30 years and up to 60 years in prison. And now, Harmony's family and all those who have followed her case are waiting for justice. I want to make sure we honor her in every way possible. All right, I want to walk through the timeline of, of what happened here because how could this happen? You have to take a look at what we know happened and then try to figure out where the problems were um, all through the life of Harmony Montgomery. Uh, joining me tonight from Boston, Massachusetts, Boston 25 reporter Bob Ward back with us. Uh, Bob, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I know there might be some potential problems with you hearing me. 
I can repeat myself, not a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing you fine. Okay, okay. that's fantastic. Let, let's start. I want to start on this timeline and sort of follow uh, what happened uh, to Harmony Montgomery. And we begin February 2019. Adam Montgomery uh, is granted custody of Harmony. April of 2019 is the last communication of FaceTime call between Harmony and her mother, Crystal. Then in July of 2019, this is significant, um, Adam Montgomery's uncle, Kevin, observed Harmony with a black eye, and Adam allegedly tells Kevin, or tells Kevin, I bashed her around this house, and then Kevin notifies DCYF, Family Services, about Harmony's injury. So let's start first with Crystal and that last communication. Um, what was going on in Crystal's life and what was she doing uh, while Adam had custody of Harmony uh, after, after February? Yeah, Crystal was uh, in treatment for her addictions and she lost custody of Harmony. And that's why all of a sudden uh, she's, uh, Har little Harmony is in Adam's orbit and she's seeing her father in prison for the first time. Now that last time that Crystal Sori ever saw her daughter was over FaceTime at Easter. And she says that she noticed that her daughter was tentative, she was scared, that something was wrong. And Adam wouldn't really talk about it. And that was the last time she ever had contact, ever even saw her daughter was in Easter 2019. So Adam Montgomery, career criminal uh, gets custody yeah. um, and then his uncle noticed Harmony in July of 2019 with a with a black eye and, and Adam admits bashing her around it's uh, unbelievable yeah right he, he he says that she's been misbehaving I think if I remember correctly that he claimed that Adam said that he wanted to take a shower and he asked Harmony to watch the infant. And of course, when the infant started crying, Harmony didn't know what to do. And Adam hit Harmony and bruised her. I mean, it is just off the charts bad. And that's just a few months before Harmony disappears forever. So at that point, Harmony is living with her father, her stepmother, and then has a, a, a sibling. Is that, that's the infant is a sibling that the new wife has? That's right. That's right. They're living on Guilford Street in New Hampshire. Uh, that's the last house that Harmony Montgomery ever had. She's living with her family there. And this is this is where that abuse allegedly happens. All right. Flash forward on our timeline um, from July of 2019 to December 7th of 2019. Mm -hmm. And this is when Adam Montgomery allegedly kills Harmony. A at this point, what is going on in the household? Where are they living and, and, and what's sort of going on here with this family? At this point, the entire family is homeless. They've been evicted from that house on Guilford Street and they are essentially living in a Chrysler Sebring in a parking lot in Manchester, New Hampshire. That's what this family is doing. Mm -hmm. And Adam Montgomery is losing his temper at his little girl, his five-year-old girl, because she cannot control herself when she has to go to the bathroom. And he's tired of cleaning up after her. And she's crying. She's a five-year-old girl. And according to the, the police affidavit the, the, that came out last year, 48-page affidavit, Kayla Montgomery claims that on that day, on December 7th, 2019, that when Little Harmony was crying because she had an accident in the backseat of the car, Adam allegedly turned around and punched her three or four times. And after that attack was done, Harmony didn't make any more verbal sounds, didn't speak, but she was making other sounds. And Adam allegedly said to Kayla, I think I really hurt her this time. So as we look at our timeline, nothing happens. This little girl now um, is dead. No one's calling police. No one is doing anything. But on November right. 18th, two years later, 2021, two years later, Crystal, 
Harmony's mom calls Manchester Police in New Hampshire to report Harmony missing. On December 27th, uh, Manchester Police and Family Services began looking for Harmony and for Adam. December 30th, 2021, a detective speaks to Adam Montgomery's brother, Christopher, and Uncle Kevin, who say they're worried about Harmony's safety and tell them about Harmony's black eye from two years ago. December 31st, patrol officers question Adam Montgomery and a new girlfriend found sleeping in a car. Not Kayla, but a new girlfriend. December 31st, court order says Adam Montgomery must cooperate in locating Harmony. Adam refuses to cooperate, provide any information. And then on January 5th, he's arrested and charged with second degree assault for that 2019 incident that left Harmony with a black eye. So what, what is taking place now in Adam's life that he's, he's with a new girlfriend and he's, again, is he, is he still homeless at this point? Yeah, he's still living in the back of a car. Um, when they spoke, when the police went to speak to Kayla, the estranged wife um, who was in the car with Adam Montgomery, they had broken up. And when the police went looking for Adam, they got a hold of Kayla and they said, where is Adam? And she said at the time, I think he's up in Maine with this new girlfriend. So that set out this search for Adam Montgomery and eventually they find him um, on the side of a road in Manchester where he was living in that car with this new girlfriend. And you can see the video right there, the, the police body cams as they find him and they go up and they wanna to talk to him about Harmony, where's your daughter? You know, we need to see where she is. And in that conversation with police, it's chilling because Adam Montgomery just said, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this at all. Let's get back to the timeline. Uh, May 20th, 2022, Kayla Montgomery testifies before the grand jury. This is his ex-wife who was with him at the time uh, that Harmony disappeared. Under oath, she says she last saw Harmony on November 30th, 2019, before going to work at Dunkin' Donuts. Investigators learned Kayla was fired from Dunkin' Donuts on November 23rd, 2019. June 3rd, 2022, Kayla Montgomery arrested for perjury. She gives her first proffer interview. She says Harmony died on December 7th, 2019, after Adam struck her in the face and on the head on three occasions. And then finally, in the fall, October 25th, Adam Montgomery is charged with the second degree murder. So let's talk about Kayla. She is crucial to everything here right and trying sure to figure is. out and put the pieces together but she's on record uh lying to investigators right and she now claims that she was fearing uh she was fearful of adam montgomery and that's why she lied when they first came to talk to her about what happened to harmony montgomery they basically caught her in a lie about that dunkin donuts episode and what she originally told police in addition was that she she thought, and the story was at the time, that Adam was bringing Harmony back to Crystal, to the mom, the natural mom, in Massachusetts. And when he came back at the end of the day, she just assumed that little Harmony was with mom in another state and life goes on. But she was also charged with welfare fraud because they were, she was continuing to cash checks, uh, Harmony's welfare checks and the, and the support checks from the state. She was continuing to do that for a lengthy period of time after Harmony was last seen. So the police knew this and she was arrested on that and she was uh, she was on ice and she wouldn't talk to, to police for a long time. But finally, um, as, as they just kind of applied more legal pressure to her and made her realize that you're protecting a guy who has no loyalty to you and is likely never going to get out. You have nothing to be afraid of. And finally, she broke down and gave us these details that are in this affidavit. And you mentioned those checks that were coming in, and you know it answers mm -hmm. a big question for me: Why on earth would Adam Montgomery want to win a custody battle? It was for exactly. the checks. It was exactly. for I, I, the Vinny, I agree checks. With you. Unbelievable. Vinny, I, to I totally agree with you. That's the only reason this guy, this convict who served time in prison, why would he need another mouth to feed? Well, because that mouth to feed is worth some money from the state. That's why. I think that's. I think you're dead on on that. Despicable. All right, Bob Ward staying with us. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what 
What happened when she disappeared, when this alleged murder took place? We'll get into those details. Uh, plus, coming up next hour. In Tallahassee, Florida, law professor Dan Markell was shot and killed in a murder-for-hire plot, and prosecutors say his ex-mother-in-law, Donna Adelson, is responsible. And tonight, we take a look at her arrest video. Okay, I didn't know there was a warrant. Did a contentious divorce lead to a killing? Jennifer Dulos vanished in 2019 and has never been found. Her estranged husband was charged with her murder, but died by suicide before going to trial. Now his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, stands trial for her alleged role in the disappearance. I think this is going to be a really fascinating case. They've thrown everything up against this defendant. The Missing Mom Conspiracy Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, only on Court TV. Did a contentious divorce lead to a killing? Jennifer Dulos vanished in 2019 and has never been found. Her estranged husband was charged with her murder, but died by suicide before going to trial. Now his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, stands trial for her alleged role in the disappearance. I think this is going to be a really fascinating case. They've thrown everything up against this defendant. The Missing Mom Conspiracy Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, only on Court TV. When they told me that, you know, he had reached over and done what he had done because she had been having multiple accidents, I went up, like, you know, I jumped up to kind of run out the room to get some air and I fainted. It was like, it just blew me away, you know? Um, because she had a history of accidents when she was scared or really stressed out um, and she didn't understand what was going on. She would have accidents because it was like her way of like letting you know like something's going on, I don't understand and I, I need you to pay attention to me, you know? Um, so, I know her history, you know, so like when I heard those things, it was like, how could you fault her for the, that trauma, you know, that trauma response? You know, she was five years old, you were living in a car, it's not like, it was an available bathroom, and it's not like she wasn't terrified of this man already. If this man was punching you in the face for every little thing, would you tell him you had to go to the bathroom? No, you wouldn't. That's Crystal Sori, Harmony's mother. Of course, Harmony's five years old. Of course she was scared. She was scared. Um, I want you to take a listen. This is tough, but this is the reality uh, of what happened to Harmony Montgomery. Chanley Painter um, took a look at the probable cause affidavit describing how she was killed. Kayla stated that on the day the Chrysler Sebring broke down, known to be December 7th, 2019, as discussed in further detail below, Adam Montgomery struck Harmony, which caused her death. Kayla stated that while living in the vehicle together, Adam was extremely upset that five-year-old Harmony was not saying when she needed to go to the bathroom and was having accidents in the car. Kayla stated that after each accident, Adam would get upset and would strike Harmony in the face and head with a closed fist. Kayla stated that on December 7, 2019, prior to the vehicle breaking down, Adam struck Harmony in the face and head on three separate occasions because she had a bathroom accident. This happened while Adam was driving the vehicle. Kayla described that Harmony was in the rear seat on the passenger side, and while Adam was driving, he turned his body and delivered sets of three to four blows with a closed fist to Harmony's face and head head on three separate occasions over the course of a few minutes. Kayla stated that after the final blow, 
Adam said words to the effect of that he felt something or heard something when he hit harmony and, quote, I think I really hurt her this time. I think I did something. Harmony began making a moaning type noise, which went on for roughly five minutes and then stopped. At no time did anyone stop or get Harmony medical attention as the result of this assault. Kayla said this happened in the morning while the family was on their way to Burger King on Route 3 in Manchester. And afterwards, the family returned to the parking lot of the Colonial Village Apartments. The family stayed at Colonial Village for approximately 20 minutes, during which time no one checked on Harmony. Kayla could not recall exactly what they did during this 20 minute time period. Kayla said that after approximately 20 minutes, the family left the Colonial Village apartments and shortly thereafter, their car broke down. Kayla said she thought the car died at approximately 8 or 9 a.m. According to the Manchester Police Department records, the car was broken down in the intersection of Elm Street and Webster Street at approximately 12.11 p.m. on December 7, 2019. Kayla said it was at that time that she and Adam discovered that Harmony was not breathing and was deceased. Kayla stated that Adam went to the trunk of the vehicle, removed clothing from a black and red Under Armour duffel bag, and placed the lifeless body of Harmony into the bag. Kayla stated at no point did either of them have any conversation about getting any type of life-saving measures for Harmony and that Adam simply put Harmony's dead body into the bag and walked it back to the parking lot of the Colonial Village Apartments. Boston 25 reporter Bob Ward still with me and joining me from Jacksonville, Alabama, forensic death investigator, host of the Body Bags podcast and professor of forensics at Jacksonville State University, Joseph Scott Morgan. Uh, Joseph, let me start here. Can you describe for us what that moment was like for that little girl and and how quickly she would lose consciousness would she realize what is going on how painful was this i think that probably that that final blow was um was the end to a long line of blunt force trauma to her head lord only knows what was going on within her brain leading up to that. And that was essentially the coup de gras, if you will. Um, I'm glad that Chanley read that one portion of the affidavit where I think it, one phrase stands out to me, Vin, where he says, this time. I think I really did, uh, I think I, 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 I did something this time. And that gives you a linear kind of uh, idea, time-wise, of how many times he may have struck her. By the way, let me just remind folks here because we've heard a lot about him. Let's remember Harmony. Harmony was blind. I want everybody to keep that in mind. She is a defenseless child who is blind, blind in her right eye then. She's, she's had struggles her entire life. And he is beating her over and over and over again. And I can guarantee you, based upon my experience dealing with child abuse cases over the years, people that abuse children don't deviate from the methodologies that they use because they're comfortable with them. And he's got her in a position where she is chronically terrified. No wonder she's having trouble controlling herself. He's got her scared. Like we can't even begin to fathom every single time, even a small flinch toward her at any moment in time could cause her to wet herself perhaps perhaps. So yeah, I mean, it, it's there is a linear connection to all of this. That final blow that was struck was just a long line leading up and Lord only knows what else was going on with her physically. I want to take a look at another piece of the probable cause affidavit. Um, Kayla, again, the ex-wife stated that Adam kept the CMC bag with Harmony's body inside of the freezer at 644 Union Street until sometime during the spring of 2020 
when Adam rented a U-Haul and during the overnight hours made a trip to an unknown destination to dispose of Harmony's dead body. Kayla stated she did not, did not know the location of where Adam dumped Harmony's body. Uh, Bob Ward, Boston 25, where are the different places that it's alleged that Harmony's body was taken after she had been killed? Well, the latest theory is that he took her body somewhere in the Boston area, quite likely in Revere, in the town of Revere, which is just north of Boston. And this is based on uh, the U-Haul uh, that's tracking, how many miles it drove that night, and also from video crossing, uh, the, I think it was the Tobin Bridge, back and forth. And they know when that truck was in that vicinity and what's in that area. So last year, the, the state police, Revere police, they were searching the salt marshes in Revere, looking for evidence, looking for little harmony. Uh, I was out there all day with them. Uh, they had dogs, they had cadaver dogs. They were searching a, an area that was pretty wide in Revere along one of the roads there that take you through. And it was very remote. And, you know, Vinny, they were looking for a needle in a haystack because little harmony had, had, had he, she had been gone so many years. How many storms came through? How many tides uh, came and went over all that time? And um, I think they were, like I said, searching for a needle in a haystack, just trying to find something that maybe if her remains were in a trash bag of some kind, that maybe a portion of that trash bag uh, did not deteriorate and maybe they would find something. But as of right now, there is no trace of how many Montgomery has surfaced. Justice Scott Morgan, um, forensic evidence in this case that will help tell the story to the jury about what happened to this little girl. What are your thoughts? I think right from the top, it's going to be that freezer. Uh, I still have memories of uh, you and I were covering it that night. Remember, we had the videography of them coming, merging out of that, that uh, location with that box. I think that there could potentially be physical evidence in there. And here's the tough thing, um, uh, Vin, uh, that defense is going to have to explain away. Why would, if there is DNA contained within that refrigerator, within that freezer, um, how, do you, how do you explain that in such a way where you're saying, okay, yeah, we can explain why her DNA would be inside of there and how much of a deposition was there contained in there. And then anything else, they, they kind of tore that apartment apart. I think any other contact traces, what we're looking for specifically is any kind of blood. Um, I, I would be keen to know what happened to this vehicle. Um, I think that, that that could potentially be be key here, particularly the back seats of that vehicle, what kind of deposition of biological material might be there as well. So that's that would be my go-to in this particular case, Ben. All right, I want to put something else up on the screen now. Um, this is an investigative report from the Office of the Child Advocate. As we take a look at the question, and how could this happen? How could the best interest of this child be to have the full care, control, and custody um, of a career criminal. In February of 2019, Mr. Montgomery's review and redetermination hearing took place in juvenile court. Ms. Sori's review and redetermination hearing did not take place that day because she was not present in court. Ms. Sori was in a different court on a care and protection case involving Harmony's half-sibling. So, Harmony's mom's not in court because she's in another courtroom handling an issue with another child. Mr. Montgomery was seeking immediate custody of Harmony with the intention of taking her to live with him in New Hampshire. Again, this is taking place in Massachusetts. The DCF attorney objected to the placement of Harmony with him. DCF, Children's Family Services, says no, don't let him take her. Mr. Montgomery's housing or employment stability was not confirmed. We know he didn't have a job. There was no exploration of Mr. Mrs. Montgomery's fitness or willingness to care for Harmony. More importantly, there was almost no evidence presented about Harmony and her needs. She was special needs. No attorney explored Mr. Montgomery's understanding of Harmony's visual impairment, her behavioral health and medical needs, or her special education services. The physical safety of the home for Harmony, who is visually disabled, was not explored. The judge then awarded Mr. Montgomery, who was living in New Hampshire, 
full custody of Harmony and determined that the ICPC did not apply. How could this happen? Also joining us, retired First Justice of the Worcester County Juvenile Court in Massachusetts and the author of the book about Harmony's case entitled A Cruel Injustice, How Massachusetts Put Four-Year-Old Harmony in the Hands of a Monster. Judge Carol Erskine is back with us. Judge, um, how could this happen? How is it in the best interests of a child to be in the hands, the care and control and custody of a career criminal? Yes, well, that's the question everyone's asking, isn't it? But the question becomes, what did the judge actually know about the criminal history? And that's um, not clear, but what is clear is that the judge did not know a lot of the information that you just read from the report. There was no evidence that came into that trial about Harmony's needs um, and uh, no evidence about the fact that she had a neurological disorder that caused the blindness in one eye. There was no evidence that came in, according to the OCA report, that um, Harmony uh, was having trouble negotiating around furniture. She also had very significant emotional disturbances because the department put her it back with mom, then pulled her out, put her back with mom, pulled her out three times. Um, she was uh, taken from mom and put back in foster care. She began to have very, very significant emotional difficulties and the department didn't provide, they didn't even provide the basic services. She, she was supposed to have therapy and um, she never really even uh, had a, a basic therapist, much less the protections under the Americans with Disabilities Act, which she was absolutely entitled to. So one of the things I say in the book is when it comes out that people will see is uh, I simply say that, you know, in Massachusetts, Harmony was expendable. And uh, unfortunately, children with disabilities like Harmony Montgomery and uh, David Almond, another, you know, young boy that was starved to death in Massachusetts, were simply expendable children within the very defective child welfare system. Um, to it's, say it's, nothing it's shocking of to me. Very defective, it's shocking um, to me because we, we've also covered cases like the Take Care of Maya trial down in Florida, where family services and everyone jumps in and they take a child away from a family that it was taking care of their child and their child had a real problem that somehow the court couldn't figure out and, and kept uh, a mother from her own child. Yet we have children that need help and they don't get the help. Now, one of the big parts of this hearing was is that uh, Harmony's mother couldn't be there. She was in another courtroom. Here she is on our show explaining where she was. So Jameson's case, um, because he was born in Boston, his case was out of Boston. I had to pick between the two hearings and it was basically, if I was at either one of them, if I wasn't at either one of them, it was going to go bad for me. So I called my lawyer frantic in Lawrence and I said, I sent over from that courthouse to the other courthouse that I would proof that I was there. They said, he said, I will, I will quote, fight for a continuance. That never happened. There was no continuance granted. There was no continuance fought for, and they moved forward and handed him custody. So in the same day, not only did my son get adopted, but my daughter got handed over to the one person that I begged them never to give her to. I thought they would give me a chance to go to that court date, you know, like, like, give me a week, you know, just to make it to that court date for Harmony, you know, because I had made it to every single court date, every visit, every class they made me do. I did everything they asked and they couldn't even give me a continuance. Unreal. Unfortunately, we're out of time for tonight, Judge, um, but we will continue to follow all of this. The trial is coming up. And of course, Core TV will be there.